What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been following, this is a 54 Chevy pickup on a 2006 Envoy frame. We just installed Air Ride and we had major problems and the only real problem was me. I screwed up. Let's get to the footage. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is a 54, it's a 51 front end, Chevy 3100 sitting on a 2006 GMC Envoy chassis. Last episode I was showing I was having issues fitting the wheels and the uh, the air ride suspension. As you can tell, this is a different wheel than last episode. I had the aluminum wheels on before. Um, this is the actually the Envoy spare tire, so it's the six lug, the worst bolt pattern there is. There's only for Envoys. Anyways, it fits and it fits pretty good. I didn't realize between the aluminum and the steel wheel that the offset is that much different. Um, about swapping the hubs to S10 in the back, I'd have to get custom made axles. Uh, I'd have to dr custom drill rotors and everything, make it all work just so I could fit a five lug from an S10 or Camaro, Corvette, whatever, the five lug. Um, I don't have to do that now. It saves me tons of money. I originally wanted to run a Steely on this. I knew it had to be a 17 at least because of the brakes. And uh, these ones are, I kind of wanted a smooth Steely, not a winter tire Steely, but it is what it is. Saves me a few grand. I'm happy about that. Definitely trying to keep things on a budget here. I found four of these on Facebook Marketplace. They're uh, in Winnipeg, a few hours away from me, where my parents live. So my dad went out and grabbed them for me. Four rims for a hundred bucks. So uh, shout out to Stato for picking those up for me. And uh, they're going to look pretty good, I think, hopefully. Um, I'll do a nice center cap, white wall tire, maybe a beauty ring. We'll see what I end up doing with the powder coat options. Um, and we'll see what we end up doing for paint as well. I ordered a lift kit to try to solve my issue about not getting enough lift so I can't turn. Uh, it was advertised as a 3-inch lift kit for an Envoy. And it showed up and it's like an inch and a half. And then I started reading the fine print, and with the suspension geometry, then it gives you three inches of lift. But I need that actual three inches spacer. Um, so I have another one. It actually just showed up like an hour ago. So I'm going to slap that in to start, and uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully, hopefully we could turn. In. Uh, this is it all the way back down bottom of the fender I'm about four inches from the ground which I'm good with in the back about three and a half I'm fully aired up right now fully cranked and it's just barely touching like it's I could run it but obviously this is fully aired up Suspension travel is pretty minimum, so I'd like to lose about 20 pounds PSI and then be able to fully turn. Uh, I don't know. I might be cutting up these fenders that I don't want to do, but it's tight. Even if I hit a bump and I'm turning this fender's fucked. So I'm going to try cranking it the other way, make sure there's no other issues. Touch in there, but we're just barely touching. The fender's resting on the tire there, just barely. Fuck. But once again, this is fully aired up, which I don't like. I think it might be reshaping this fender. I kind of got two options of screwing with these fenders. If I could, I think easiest would be re-radius this and bring it like an inch up, maybe two. I think I could do a pretty good job of it, but I don't really want to change the appearance. I also could 
you know, cut it along the flange, move a hole outside of the fender out an inch, weld in a flat piece all the way around. But then, is the front going to be wider than the back? So I've literally just been sitting here staring at this thing for the last hour probably. I just don't believe that that is all the lift that bag could supply. Like that's like two and a half inches of lift. So I'm going to take this strut right out, put it on the bench, leave the air hooked up to it, and really start testing it because I think, I think it should be able to lift another three or four inches, which would solve all my problems. So I don't know, it didn't really come with instructions, maybe I set something up wrong on the top hat. I don't know, I just need to experiment more, because if I can get more lift out of this bag, it will solve all my issues without cutting fenders. Okay, I got the strut out, and with no weight on it, it comes all the way down. The shock itself still has some extension to it. So realistically, my bag should come all the way up and bottom out that shock but when it's in the car it's not doing that so let's put some air to it let's see what's happening here It's like 40 psi. I mean, it's got no weight on it, but that thing's got like six inches of travel. Right there, this thing is about two and a half bagged. One that's in the car. Let's finish a set. It's four inches of lift, and I'm getting about two inches of lift in the car. So where is that other two inches going? Well, let's try installing it this way, aired up. And we'll see what's uh, what's causing the limitations. Okay, this is no upper control arm attached, so this shouldn't. The suspension shouldn't limit the bag at all, I think. That's six inches, so that's pretty similar to what it was on the in the vise. What is limiting it not doing that in the car here? Suspension assembled. Put the wheel on. Let's throw it on the ground and cycle it. Okay, yeah. compressor's done filling up. Yes, yeah, so all it takes is 80. 80 psi again. I guess just the weight of the engine and everything is that heavy. I'm gonna try some shit. Guys. I'm a fucking idiot, part of my language, but I'm a fucking idiot. My air compressor has a regulator on it, and it's set to 80 psi. I only could get 80 psi into these bags because my regulator would set. Otherwise, the tank pressure and the bag pressure would equalize. I've just been fucking around for the last four hours trying to get more lift out of these bags well, what is wrong and it's been set like that for months so I gotta put this all back together and then we're gonna see how much lift I can get and maybe I don't even have to cut fenders oh sometimes you just gotta think a little bit I have my air compressor regular set to 125 psi this is gonna be the moment of truth if I'm an idiot well I mean I know I'm an idiot but 
Moment of truth if I almost cut my fender for nothing. I'm already past 80. Past 100. 110. Oh my god, I'll be able to turn no problem. So, oh. Oh my goodness. This changes everything. I've been dealing with this for weeks, and my issue, and my issue has been me. Because I don't know the regular set properly. So I have that 3 inch spacer installed on top of the strut right now. The air strut. And I took that measurement based on only being able to get 80 PSI in that bag. Right now I have 110 and that's just because what my compressor goes to. And I'll be able to turn no problem. Do I need the 3 inch spacer now? I said earlier in the video that I ordered one and it showed up and it was an inch, 1.8 inches I believe. And I still have it, I haven't returned it yet. Holy shit, this changes everything. What an idiot. Fuck. What a waste of time. And then money, but I can return the lift kits probably. Like I'll be able to turn all day. There's no oh my fender gap. Ah. Oh. See, 110. That's. That's a pretty firm ride, but if I could ride at 80, oh my god, does that change things. Oh my god, I can't get over how much lift this has now. I've been, I've been emailing the company saying like, why is this only giving me two inches of lift, two and a half? Like I couldn't figure it out. I probably don't need this three inch lift kit now in here, which yeah, I probably don't need that big of a lift anymore. Which means I could go lower bagged out. This changes everything and it's all my fault. I'm super happy I figured this out now. Like you already can tell I have a line marked out of where I was gonna cut the fenders, which I don't have to do now. Eight one point eight inch spacer. It's in my truck package ready to return. I'm gonna try putting that in instead of the three inch. I know for a fact I still need to put a spacer in there. If you remember when I was fully bagged down from the last video, my control arms just came up too much to hit my fender. And uh, I put in that 2 inch spacer last time and it worked out. So I'm hoping the 1.8 inch actual strut spacer will work. Let's toss that in and... Uh Okay, this is with the, we're gonna call it two inch, it's the 1.8 inch spacer in there. And 120 PSI aired up. I mean, you'll be able to tell, I'll be able to turn no problem. So, let's put this down to, I think, 80 should be a decent ride height. Oh, come on! No fucking way. Oh my god. We even got room for suspension. No way. Check the other way. Oh my god. Let's see how low you go. 
How soft can we ride this? Yeah, we can go all the way down to 60 PSI. <laughs> Fucking did it. We won. We won one. Alright guys, I got lots of hours into this video. And I apologize because I really didn't do anything. I just screwed around because of my screw up. Uh, it's finally solved. I am super mad at myself that I made this mistake, but I'm also excited that it's solved and it was only a mistake on my end and not the truck. I thought I was gonna have to cut fenders and alter the appearance of the truck that I did not want to do. I was trying to avoid everything and I'm, I was very close to cutting and I'm super glad I never did. Would have been such a piss off if I would have cut them, did everything, fully done whatever truck painted and then I put air compressor and tank and whatever everything in here and all of a sudden it lifts four inches higher than as expected, would have been pissed. But, glad we caught it in time. It's too bad, but sometimes that happens when you're hot rodding. Anyways, everyone, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, it helps the channel more than you know, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.